This module is intended to help smallholder rubber farmers to improve their productivity through new planting and replanting efforts on their plot. This module will cover the selection of planting material, land preparation, planting methods, and the maintenance of young rubber plants. The choice of planting material is an important factor in the development of smallholder rubber plantations. The selection of planting material will have an impact on yield for the next 25 years. The planting material chosen must be in good quality. Good quality planting material can be obtained through rubber seedlings, clones, and grafting of rubber tree stems. Some forms of planting material include Stumps with nodes can be directly planted in the field, nurseries, or in poly bags. Cuts on the stump are to be made at an angle as high as 10 cm above the grafted area. The root fibres of the stump must be kept at 5 cm while the supporting roots can be kept at 25 cm. Mini stumps can be directly planted in the field or in nurseries. Mini stumps originate from stumps with nodes which are allowed to grow till an age of 6 to 12 months. A cut is made at an angle of 50 cm above the node on the leaf stalk. The root stalk is cut 10 cm above the grafted area. The roots of the stump are allowed to grow to a length of 40 cm. Seedlings with single crown growth can be planted in the field or in nurseries. Stumps with nodes or seeds can be planted in poly bags to obtain seedlings with single crown growth. They can be further grafted with buds from other type of clones. The recommended type of rubber clones to be planted by smallholder farmers are found here. It is important to select the right type of clone. Smallholder farmers tend to use clones that produce latex only to maximize their yield. Research on the growth of rubber trees from various clones have been carried out. Under the same conditions, the results show that PB260 clone had better growth as compared to BPM1, RRIC100, and RRIM600 clones. The growth of rubber trees from grafting is slower than trees from clones under the same conditions. Land preparation for rubber cultivation aims to ensure good growing conditions for rubber tree and prevent the onset of white root disease. New land clearing is directed to land specifically designated for plantations and farmers are discouraged to do land clearing in the forest area. The first stage of land clearing starts with the cutting down of old rubber trees. Rubber trees and bushes can be cleared using a machete. When logging rubber trees, ensure the trees are falled in the same direction or side to facilitate disposal. A fallen tree must be removed immediately and its tree stump must be dug out of the ground completely. The stumps must be stacked and dry in the sun to kill any white root disease. Land strips with the width of 3 meters should be cleared for the planting of rubber trees. Assess the land area to estimate its suitability for planting and the number of trees to be planted. Mark a 6 meter line along the area of planting. The line must be along an east-west direction. For flat land, the tree grafts must be placed in a row facing the same direction. For steep land, the tree grafts must face the upward direction of the slope. Planting rows must be adjusted according to the contour of the soil. Place a pole and tie a rope at one of the corners of the planting area and pull along the direction of the 6 meter line and secure it. At the same point, tie a rope of 3 meter length and stretch it in the north-south direction. Place bamboo sticks at each planting point 3 meters apart. Remove the rope and mark the spot with the bamboo stick again. Repeat this process again until all planting points have been marked in the area. 
At every point, dig a hole with a minimum height, width, and length of 40 cm. Place fertilizer in each hole. After digging a hole and removing the soil, place the stump inside. Place soil into the hole in three separate layers and compact each layer before placing the next layer. Ensure that the top soil is mounted so that rainwater does not pond and flood the area. Start by slicing the bottom of the poly bag using a sharp knife. Carefully make cuts on the sides of the poly bag. Place the poly bag with the seedling into the ground. Remove the poly bag and dispose it properly. Plastic poly bags are collected and not disposed of in the rubber plantation area because it is a plastic waste material that is difficult to decompose. Pruning is necessary to ensure that the rubber tree stem has sufficient tapping fields available. Prune branches that grow below 3 meters high. There are some young rubber trees that have difficulty in forming branches even though they have grown to a height of more than 3 meters. These trees will need to have branches stimulated. The lack of branches in trees will inhibit the growth of their stem circumference, reduce their ability to attain tapping maturity, and make them prone to stem breaks when exposed to strong winds. Therefore, it is important to stimulate branch formation. Cut stalks from rubber tree branches and leave about 2 to 3 stalks remaining on the branch. Make an incision on the tree stem about 3 meters above the ground and tie the area with a banana leaf. After 1 to 2 weeks, shoots will appear from the incision. In the development of rubber plantation, farmers should know the proper steps in the selection of planting materials, land preparation and planting, pruning and how to stimulate a good tree. The selection of the right seeds and maintenance before the rubber plants reach maturity is the key to success to get optimal results.